Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us, and welcome to Game Day in the region of the Region Sports Network, streaming worldwide on the Internet at Facebook.com slash Region Sports and regionsports.com. We come to you today from Highland High School as Laborers Local 41 presents coverage of the 2021 Highland Holiday Hoops Fest. It's opening round matchup between the Whiting Oilers and the Highland Trojans. And with that, I'm Michael Brandner. I'll be play by play for today's game and joining me with the color analysis, the one, the only, Jay Simmons. Uh, never gets old that introduction. I thank you, Mr. Bradner. I try to have one for every broadcast partner go. that I work with. So, <laughs> All right, this one, we saw a good opening round matchup between Hanover and Morton. This one should be good as well between the Highland Trojans and the Whiting Oilers. The records tell a different story, though. Highland coming in 2-5 and five on the year. Whiting coming in 0-5. Oh and, and the first thing that sticks out to you on this uh, on the schedule would be what, Mr. Simmons? Well, it looks like on December 9th at Highland. Have, did they have a name for the, the field the field house here? If they did, I don't know. Oh, the okay. Uh, you know what? Uh, we'll, we'll just go with the house Jeff Simmons built. That's my brother. He was a... <laughs> Uh, All-state basketball player back in the, the late 70s. What were those like? I wasn't around for that. Uh, I came I came 20 years later. <laughs> but you know what? They they had to stop the play after every basket was made to get it out of the basket back in the 70s. <laughs> uh, but back then, there was no three-point line, so that's a little bit of a difference in yeah, the game. A little difference. But yeah, it looked, uh, let's look at that game. Uh, Highland won 63-21. to 21. So, it's, you know, it's going to be an uphill battle for the Oilers in today's game. Highland comes in at 2-5. and five. Their other win on the season against River Forest at 45-34. to 34. Highland offensively averaging 39 points a game and defensively giving up 52. So that would explain the 2-5 and five record. You know, defensively, Highland's going to have to step it up. Try and you know try and control the tempo here to keep this. Well, if, you know if anything's indication that you know keep it a low-scoring game. Both teams and Whiting just averaging 34 points a game, so both teams low-scoring. So it's going to be a defensive battle here today. Yeah, it definitely will be. Yeah, these two teams met earlier this year. In fact, because Whiting is 0 and 5, I went back to try to see the last time they won a game. Jay, it's been over 300 days since Whiting has won a game. The last win coming February 13th at Covenant Christian over in DeMont. So it's been a little while since they've got a victory, and they have a good chance here in this tournament to potentially get a victory. Correct. The nice thing about this tournament, this Highland Holiday Hoops Fest, is that you get to play three games automatically. So whether you're playing game three, whether you're game playing, you, you have a chance to win a game, which would be nice to get a, a win here in this tournament to propel you, especially once we start getting into conference play as we turn the, the page to a new year. That's right, and that, you know, it always helps, you know, you know, when you come into practice and you're just fresh from a victory, it always helps the tempo of practice, helps helps you pull the pieces together. You know, it, I've been on some teams where, you know, you know, we've had some losses and and all of a sudden, you know, you get that first victory and all of a sudden it just it just feels like practice is a little bit more fun. You're you're going into the next game with a little bit more enthusiasm, a little bit more you know, spirit more intensity. So you know that does make a that does make a big difference in a program. Even though your record is still below 500, that one that first victory oh, tastes so sweet. Yeah, it, you need to get that to start. You know, putting yourself on good footing for the rest of the year. They're coached by T.J. Toth in his first year with the Whiting Oilers. I told you in the first game, there's a lot of new coaches in uh, in this in this tournament here. This year, uh, we've had a whole carousel of coaching changes in <laughs> the offseason, and it's fully on display here in this tournament today. He was the assistant under Aaron Mercer. So it's not like Toth doesn't know this program. He knows how this program works. He knows a lot of these guys. So that kind of makes it a little bit easier for him as he transitions into, into this Whiting team. By the way, the last time Whiting beat Highland was back on December 6, 2018 in overtime, 71-65. So it's been a little while. But Do you have, uh, have the number of days on that one? I don't off the top of my head. No, I, didn't, I, didn't, I decided not to count that one. It's, okay. it's still over 300. I'll go with that. Uh, but their first conference game that they're going to play against Ileana Christian on January 4th coming up before you know it here for the Whiting Oilers. Meanwhile, for the Highland Trojans, well, you know what? Let's get to them after the break. Let's take a quick yes, timeout. Sir. You're watching Game Night on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. You know... 
Wow, they'll prepare fresh fish while you wait. Did you know? They make over 40,000 donuts from scratch every week? Did you know? They offer 23 different deli platters for your party? Did you know? They have freshly chopped fajita mix ready to cook. Did you know? They have the best fried chicken in the area? Did you know? They offer our signature curbside service 14 hours a day. Strike and Van Till, now you know. Indiana laborers are the best trained, safest, and most productive workforce around. Day after day, year after year, union laborers in Indiana go to work and get the job done. On time, on budget, and with fewer lost time accidents than any other trade. Why is that? It starts with the training these professionals receive through the Indiana Laborers Training Trust Fund. Since 1968, we've been responsible for a hands-on skill training program that has enrolled more than 25,000 laborers. Take the finest instructors and staff in the industry. Leading edge training facilities in a safe environment conducive to learning and combined with the eager and qualified laborers to produce the safest, most productive and reliable workforce in the industry. The proud men and women of Indiana's Laborers International Union. I'm Crowell Company's Lantern Man. I'll cover your motorcycle. I'll be with you on the water. I'll be with you on the snow. I'll cover your insurance needs wherever you go. I'll be at Crowell Agency from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. As Crowell Company's Lantern Man, I'm your insurance superhero. Crowell Company's, the insurance professionals in Highland, Maryville, and Michigan City. It's been said that one man's junk is another man's treasure, but at Total Disposal, your junk is our junk. Think of Total Disposal as that key player that has several options, commercial, residential, or hand off your junk at our Blaine Street Partners Transfer Station. Total Disposal is more than a service provider. We are an innovator for a sustainable tomorrow, well beyond the curb. For a complete list of services, go to TotalDisposal.com. Honesty and dependability, that's the Total Disposal promise. Welcome back as Laborers Local 41 presents RSN game day, game day coverage of the Highland Holiday Hoop Fest right here on the Region Sports Network. We're just about set for tip-off here. This is game two of the day. Opening round matchup between Highland and Whiting coming up. Let's take a look at our Tuesday forecast brought to you by our friends at Economy Electric Heating and Cooling. Today's forecast, uh, cold. And then there is... Uh, <laughs> Some As you can see out the window. Stuff, yeah, there's some nasty stuff falling from the sky uh, in the form of frozen precipitation. I don't use the word. It's nasty. Uh, so it's going to be a fun drive home for us. And that's your economy electric heating and cooling. Let it snow. <laughs> Ugh. It's economy electric heating and cooling, keeping you cool in the summer and cozy in the winter. We'll give you the starting lineups here in just a moment as Whiting and Highland about to tip things off. They, they, these officials are not as accommodating to us uh, giving out those starting lineups first. I'm okay with that. I can live with it. Mm -hmm. Starting lineup for Highland, you got Braden Jones, Walter Glover Jr., Eric Tannis, Nick Steele, and Nick Johnson. Going up to the rack, trying to get it to go. That is a nice bucket there for Nick Johnson to get things started. He gets the bucket and gets fouled. So he will go to the line to shoot a three-point play. And the early foul committed against Whiting will be number 24. That is Joe Gendrus. We'll go over them in just a moment. Yeah, Nick Johnson, 6'4", only a sophomore. Free throw no good, so still 2-0 Highland, but they get the rebound, though. Yeah, Nick Steele on the offensive board, crashing. Steele giving up to Jones here. 30 seconds into this one, 2-0 Highland. Given to the corner for Tannis for three. It's off the mark. He goes out of bounds, and oh, they're going to say it's out of bounds. There is no tripping foul. For the Whiting Oilers, you got Nolan Toth, Zach, uh, I'm sorry, Luke Zorich, uh, Dominic Harbin, Jedediah Huffman, and Joe Gendris. And Julius Torres just checked in. Of course he did after I read the starting <laughs> line. That's, you know, what else is new? We'll talk about the Highland team as well as this one progresses. We talked about Whiting a little bit before our, in our open. This one tipped out of bounds by Highland there, so it's still going to stay Whiting basketball. Glad you're with us on this Tuesday afternoon. 
It is officially afternoon now, 12.01. Yes. There we go. Right, right inside the lane, Huffman there. Almost had it stolen away, is able to keep here. Dishes down baseline, fighting for the shot. Gives out to Harbin for three, it just off the mark. Johnson comes down with the rebound. And as we mentioned, this is more of a 3-2 zone here. As we mentioned, these two teams met earlier this month. It's a big win for Highland. A little shot off the glass, no good. Steele trying to come down the rebound. Johnson gets it. He goes off the glass again, still no good. Toth comes down for the rebound. He dishes it ahead to Zorich. Get back to Toth. Now here to Huffman at the free throw line. Gives up for a three-point basket just off the mark. That was from Zorich. And now Highland comes back down in transition left to right. Steele up to Jones. Johnson to the window. Had it, almost had it blocked, but he's able to kiss it off the window. So Johnson with a quick four points for Highland. Yeah, Johnson just taking the ball deep on the post. And uh, he's, you know, he's got a bit of a size advantage out there, so he, they're going to work it to him all day. Hoffman gives to Harbin. Harbin. Now to Torres. Trying to get this shot to fall. Johnson comes down with the rebound. Dishing up ahead. Jones to the baseline. Meets traffic. No good. Johnson trying to get that shot to go down. Gets his own rebound here. Dishes it out to Tannis. And now Steele will go to work. Yeah, Whiting extending out to, with the 3 2 zone as a. Uh... Hanover was playing a 2-3 zone at earlier game. Steal for three. Hits the back of the iron a little too strong. Rebound, though, by Glover Jr. to put it back home. Yeah, Glover, nice, nice rebound right there. Gets a strong take to the basket. 6-0 so Highland early on. Toth. Now up to Harbin as they pass around the perimeter here. Torres. Yeah, Whiting's got to really pick up the ball movement. Takes a deep three just off the front. Glover Jr. comes down with the rebound. So Steele just inside the three-point arc. Has to dribble back out between the legs. This kid's a fantastic athlete, by the way. Plenty written about him during the football season. Toth. What position did he play in football? I know I did a Highland game against... He was the quarterback, wasn't he? Okay. I know I did one game this year, so it's sort of hard to paste them all together. I might be wrong on that. I didn't, uh, I didn't do a Highland game this year. I'm trying to think which game it was. I think it was, it was Highland-Hobart game. I'll take your word for it here. You would know you were at the game. Yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> you can go back and look at the emails that we get to see our schedule. Uh, Nathan sends me emails, I delete them. <laughs> Trying to put that one up, a foul, blocking foul, going to be committed against Steele. I'm sure somebody listening will let us know. We'll check the comments on if I'm correct or not. More than likely I'm not. I'd just be making things up. Foul, by the way, for Highland, as we said, was on Steele. Yeah, please keep track of them in this game, will you? I, I'm doing my best. First free throw put up for Zorich is no good. I don't know why I need to do it. They have it all on the board. What do you need me for? <laughs> you, can even, you can actually see that one better than you can my book. So Zorich does knock down the second one. So Whiting is on the board with a point. Yeah, Highland doing a nice job moving the ball around the perimeter. Just got to Try and get the ball reversal a little bit quicker to get that zone out of place. Glover Jr. Trying to feed it now. This is Jones. Now, see, we were talking about last time when Morton was having a hard time with the, with the, with the zone. This is what you do, as we were talking about, is really you... But they need, the Highland needs to get somebody moving, somebody cutting through the lane. They're just a little, still, a little too stationary. Johnson drops it down home. Yeah, Steele with the uh, nice feed right there. Nice pass. Toth looking on the left side. Gives, gives it up to Zorich. Now onto Torres here. Tries to put up with a little right hook there. Lover Jr. coming down with the rebound. Jones in transition. 
Might have gotten away with a little bit of a carry there. Yes, he did. Zorich coming down in transition. Steele banging right against him there. Free throw a little too, or I'm sorry, the layup a little bit too strong there. Give this to, so, uh, to Jones there in that corner. And now Johnson knocks it home again, and he gets fouled. Looks like that's going to be on number 10, Luke Zorich, for the Whiting Oilers. So his first and the team's <laughs> second. Do I have that down? There we go. <laughs> Let's see. So it's Nick Johnson, 10 points, and Whiting, 1. I'm sorry, Highland, 10 points. Correct. And <laughs> see, I know you can't read this right because that's 8 points right eight. down. Okay, for well, that's why I don't have my reading glasses on. <laughs> the other two points come to Glover. Oh, there we go. Who puts up that floater. It's no good. But Highland continuing at the rebounds here. Working on making their passes, opening up their... Their abilities here, trying to feed it into Johnson here. See, now look, there, everybody's sitting, standing stationary. Got to got to move, which we talked about in the first game. You know, movement away from the ball sets up some easy baskets. Xander Eisen, by the way, in the game for Highland as well, number five. Bottom right part of your screen. Given to the corner, riding on the baseline. And we're going to have a foul underneath. As Tannis was trying to drive to the lane, but the foul against Whiting will be on Nolan Toth, his first, team's third. We have a couple check-ins here for Highland as well. Solomon Almanari, Miniri, sorry, uh, excuse me. And number 12, uh, Nick Davenport for the Whiting Oilers. We also had, there was another one. Ah, uh, yes, Rico Maldonado for Highland as well has checked into the game. Ooh, Rico Castillo. <laughs> I would pay good money to watch Rico go out there right now as a five-second call called against Highland. I've got three fouls for, for Whiting. Oh, and now a little travel. So a turnover for Highland, now a quick turnover for Whiting here. Action a little stagnant here. It did have a nice flow to it, and all of a sudden it just ran into a wall. We'll pick it back up here. Yeah, let's do it. Glover grabs that one. Eisen giving it to Steele. Now when he says Rico, I'm not sure if he's talking to our producer or if he's talking to... <laughs> <laughs> Steele. Gives off to Maldonado. Give it into the paint. Eisen stops the baseline for the jumper. It looked like he might have had it tipped off his hand yes, a little bit there. Yes, it looked like it. Yep. Some good defense there for the Oilers. 90 seconds to go in this opening quarter. Whiting back down here. They've got a single point on the board. Davenport with the basketball. Given up to Huffman. Now dishing out. This is 20. Donaldson. Nelson puts up his shot. Glover comes down with the rebound. He's been a rebounding machine already in this one. Enrico, I did something very intelligent before this game, after our previous game, as this Maldonado shot, no good. Rebound comes down to Whiting. I went down and double checked the books for both teams to make sure that all the numbers <laughs> matched up because both teams are uh, dealing with a couple of COVID issues. So some of the uh, JV kids getting a chance to be called up for... Both teams here under a minute to play. That was the thing that we talked about heavily last year was, and it's really wreaking havoc right now across not only high school sports, but just all around the country and professional sports, everything you can think of. Yes. Uh, the COVID issues are, are putting guys out of commission for a little while, trying to feed it down into Almaniri as he gets that shot. Yeah, strong take to the basket. 12-1 your score with 18 seconds to go in the opening quarter for this Highland Holiday Hoops Fest opening round matchup. And we'll have a travel committed against Whiting here. As we'll have a check-in here for Highland. That's Andrew Sands checking in. Yeah, Whiting making several unforced errors the last couple times down the court. So, yes, I wrote down the numbers and the names. So I have, I've got those. Oh, they got a, we Highland's going to call a timeout. 
We're going to time out here with 13.6. They're going to draw up something here for this last play of the opening quarter. Again, the winner of this one will take on Morton later this evening. Again, this is a uh, quadruple header that we have here on the Region Sports Network for not only today, but the next two days following as well. Yeah, Morton won the first game 58 to 49 over Hanover. Correct. That was a fun one. Got to see a uh, really tale of two halves of basketball yeah. there. Yeah, I think um, Hanover was up by two points in the, at the end of the first half and then was down by five at the end of the third quarter. So a definite turnaround for the Morton Governors in that third quarter. True. So Coach Fabian here for Highland in his first year with the Trojans. Coached last year by Jordan Heckard. Again, we talk about there being a carousel of coaching changes around the region this off, this past offseason. Holy moly. This one hits the, the backboard there in the first quarter. Going to come to an end with a 12-1 lead for the Highland Trojans. And that's how the first quarter ends. You're watching game day on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. With electrical services from Economy Electric Heating and Cooling, you can radiate the perfect amount of light and energy into your home. From rewiring and code upgrades to ceiling fans, lighting, security, and more, Economy Electric Heating and Cooling's trained electricians will make sure you can enjoy your home on full power all the time. For a free estimate on electrical work, call Economy Electric Heating and Cooling at 219-923-4441, and you can visit them on the web at 4ajobdoneright.com. That's the number 4ajobdoneright.com. Java Wave at your local Family Express is the perfect way to get your day started or keep you moving at any time. With 12 freshly ground bean to cup flavors to choose from, Java Wave at Family Express has just what you're looking for, whether it's hot or iced coffee. To see all of the delicious flavor options and to find a Family Express near you, log on to FamilyExpress.com slash Java Wave. Welcome back to the Highland Holiday Hoops Fest presented by Labor's Local 41. Labor's Local 41. To find out how you can have a career in as a union laborer, check out labor, laborers41.com. We're also going to name the Crow Company's Lantern Man Superhero of the Game following today's ball game. The Crow Companies are the insurance superheroes. Yeah, uh, Ladanian Barnes was the... Crow Company superhero of the game for Morton in the first game with 19 points. Pull up jumper for three. That's good. Luke Zorich. Nailed and already just one. like that, more points scored in this quarter than the second than the first quarter. Combined. So four points for Whiting here. Eight point game. Jumper for Highland is good. That was Andrew Sands. Lead grows to 10 for the Trojans here. Yeah, Sands did a nice job setting his feet. Just took the jumper right over to defender. Jumper no good for Davenport there on the move. Here comes Steele. Steele has to stop. Pull up three-pointer. No good. Rebounded, though, by Sands. Pulls it back out to Maldonado. Give now to Ison. Maldonado dishes back out. Swinging around the perimeter, Maldonado for a three-point basket, and it falls through. It tried to come back out. Again, nice job right there. Highland with some good ball movement, quick passes, really hurts that zone. We're going to have a whole slew of Oilers checking in here in just a moment. Line change. Hey, you can call it that, sure, why not? <laughs> we got two checking in for Highland here at the next whistle. That one's on the floor. Body's hitting the floor. Highland comes away with it. Maldonado gives to Steele. Steele on the baseline. Very close to stepping it out of bounds. Up to the window. Too strong. Rebound. Rebound comes down to Torres. Jose Torres for Whiting. That's number 32. Jose Torres. 34 with it now. Daniel Sotelo. Three-point basket by Zorich again. Is good. He's carrying these Oilers right now. He's got six points. He's got all seven points. And that is a carry. And oh. an answer by Sands on the three-point basket. So that's five for him. And we have a timeout taken by Whiting. 
And it'll be a 30-second timeout, so we'll keep it right here with 543 left to go. Make sure you stay with us after the game as we'll name the IKORCC play of the game. Yeah, Case Kuzman with the dunk mid-second quarter. Not an LU, just a dunk. Oh, thank you, Mr. Simmons. Yeah, we're not going to let that one go. I will make sure somehow, some way to repay you when we return to school, sir. (laughs) Better hurry up. I'm not going to be there very few years, (laughs) many years. Uh, Did I see correctly? You're jumping back into the coaching ranks? Did I see that correctly? Yes, I am. Okay. I'm going to be coaching uh, middle school track. Look at you. Yeah. Work with the sprinters. I used to be fast. I was going to say, I, I kind of want to see you sprint now. <laughs> no. I'm going to have to go check one of these out. I'm going to have to go follow you onto the track. Shot put up, but it is a foul on the way up for Toth. You're not doing the shot put or the, nope. the high jump or anything like that? No, I'm, I'm glued to the ground now. <laughs> uh, the foul, by the way, was on Maldonado. His first, team second. And the free throw for Toth is good. So he is the second Oiler to score in the game. Misses on the second, so he's stuck with a single point. But he contributes one-eighth of the scoring here for Whiting today. (laughs) Three-point basket, no good. Rebound comes down to Ison. Island trying to find their, their lanes, trying to pass and work their way around. A cross court pass. Got the big man on the block. And it looks like he's going to commit the charge. So that is Johnson. Johnson called for that foul, his first. Team's third. By the way, Christian Zekazika is in the game for Highland as well. Number 12. Don't worry, I'll say it. You don't have to. I was just going to say that. You got that. You're on that one. (laughs) Toth trying to drive inside. Had it blocked, but a foul is going to be called. And they're going to say that it was a shot, so two two, uh, free throws coming for Toth. They said the foul is on Johnson again, so that is his second. That's not... uh, Already, that's not the guy that Highland wants to be getting into foul trouble here in this second quarter, under five minutes to play. First free throw rattles around, no good. And Highland comes in with their own line change. Anamiri comes in. Tannis comes back in. Glover, Jones. Zekazika as well. That free throw, no good for Toad. He's one of four from the line. Holding put. Jones trying to feed it inside. This is Glover. Glover going all the way to the window, or going all the way to the basket. Yeah, surrounded by three Whiting Oilers, still able to put the ball in the basket. Nice take. Zorch trying to feed it down into Harbin here. Torres trying to give it behind the back there. (laughs) That looked like Rico trying to do that. Zorich pulls up for a two. Turnaround two. Was, yeah, a little turnaround two there. Did not have a chance. Uh, they did not signal for the three. There's a give to Jones now. Baseline jumper no good. Glover gets the rebound and kisses it off the window. And we'll have a delay of game here as uh, Toth needs to tie his shoe. So you know how you prevent doing that, Jay? I'm going to have to ask why. You do, you do what I do, and you just wear the shoes with no, with no sh- <laughs> shoelaces. You just put the slip-ons well, on. Well, you know what? The, these guys in high school, they can still bend over and touch their shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't able to do that in high school. What are you talking about? <laughs> I had to sit on the floor to be able to do that. Uh-huh. Toth giving it in the corner to Huffman, and there is going to be a reach-in foul coming against Jones here. That was the fourth... This will be the fifth team foul for Highland. See, I already missed one. Mm -hmm. No, I'm looking at the wrong side. Oh, I'm still missing one. (laughs) So foul is on Jones. I'll get one of these. I'll get it right eventually. Trying to pass it in. Donaldson in the game for Whiting right now. Wow. Uh, Doesn't look back at the rim. 
I was looking down at my roster. Who hit that? Uh, Zorch. Zorch with another three. That is the third tray of this quarter. He's got nine yeah, once, in this corner alone, ten on the game. Yeah, once he gets his feet set and gets into that motion of that shot, he's been very accurate today. Tannis for a long-range three, no good. Rebound comes down to Almanieri. He gets that one to fall. Yeah, nice little spin move on the, in the middle of the lane there, little baby hook. Finishes it off. Highland now up 26 to 11. Trying to Oops. shoot the long-range three there. Toth, no good. Here comes Jones with it in transition, trying to feed through. Glover going to the window, and it falls through. Nice pass, nice fast break. Nice spacing by Highland on that fast break, being able to get the pass and the bucket. 2.40 left to go here in this opening half here between Highland and Whiting. Little jumper no good as Whiting's got a, oh, it's uh, Gendrus, excuse me. Turn around, shot for Huffman, that's good. Yeah, nice cut across the lane there for Huffman. Found a little opening and... Nailed the little jumper. Well, one of the things you talked about in game one was moving without the basketball, and that was a perfect opportunity for him there. Yep, and the defense was just asleep right there in the middle of the lane. Trying to feed it inside to the big man on the block. A three-point basket by Zeka Zika. Yeah, nice job, number 12. <laughs> <laughs> Under two minutes to play. The lead continuing to grow for Highland here. It is actually their, let's see, one, two, that's their third tray of the game as we have a unforced turnover. turnover here. We'll have a check in here for Whiting as Cameron Patterson checks in the game. Patterson helping out by getting the, by getting the net all straightened out down there. Yep. Steal with the basketball now for Highland. He's playing with one foul. Glover beyond the three-point arc. Here's Steele. Jones. Now Maniri. Gives up now Tannis for the long-range shot, and he gets it. Yeah, nice shot. Nice nice job uh, dishing the ball out from inside out. Inside out, a little pass and going right there. I'm going to just start writing threes down. Nobody seems to want to make the layups anymore <laughs> here in these final few minutes of this half. I, I, I stand by what I say to this day as Jones steals this one, gets to the window and lays it home. I was hoping he would get airborne, but we can't get too excited for those of you that are maybe watching in your offices uh, at work or something, watching your kids play here. Happy to bring you the coverage here on the Region Sports Network. Three-point shot, no good. On the jumper for Donaldson. Jones. Out of control. And that's going to be a, ooh, we got a block. I was going to call. I was going to say going to travel. I was looking at the travel. I did not see the block first, but the officials did. Fouls on 22. That's Torres. Anyway, I was going to say I have probably the unpopular opinion um, when it comes to how I view. I don't watch the NBA that much. I just have a hard time with the way that. Not, only, not, not the way things are run, but just the way that calls are made and, and stuff. I just It's hard to watch for me personally. Um, but one guy that I just have a hard time... I, 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 he, I know he's a good person, uh, but he's really kind of ruined a lot of the fundamentals of basketball is Steph Curry. I, a, a great player. Yes, he 100%, is. 100%. A great player. There's no question. If he can make shots from anywhere, but, man, oh, man, it takes away from a lot of the fundamentals that you, know, you try to teach a lot of kids because yes. now kids just want to push up threes and and stuff like that from anywhere on the court. And yeah, he can, he can pull it up from just about midcourt and bang it home. And don't get me wrong. He, like I said, he's a great player and a great person. But man, it's just through those kind of things that are, are taking away some of those fundamentals yeah. that have been taken oh, away definitely. from the game. They're a little travel. Again, whiting with another, another turnover. Yeah, it's going to be one of, the, one of the stories of this game for whiting. They do have 13 points on the board. You have the... The schedule right there. What was the final score of that first meeting between these two? 60. Uh, let me see here. I dig out all that paper right yep. there. Yep. Uh, Highland won 63 21. Okay. Now Maniri tries to put that one down and he does. That is done basically on the same pace as that game. 15 seconds to go in this first half. 
Donaldson pulls up from long range, a little too strong. Rebound comes down to Highland with six seconds to go. Coming up down the floor, the shot does not foul, but he is fouled as Andrew Sands. And the foul, I believe it was going to be on Donaldson, or do they call it on? Number 20, I don't have him on this roster. You've yeah, got 20 him. is uh, Sean Donaldson. Both teams at five team fouls now. First shot no good for Sands. Make sure you stay with us after the game as we'll have the Crow Company's Lantern Man superhero of the game. Crow Company's proud to recognize the superheroes on the basketball court. Knocks that one down, though, is Sands. Six points for him in this one half. One second left. And shot no good as Huffman tried to get it. Tried to get it off. Well, Highland's starting to pull away here. 40 to 13, your halftime score. We'll step aside. We'll be back in just a little bit. You're watching Game Day on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Indiana laborers are the best trained, safest, and most productive workforce around. Day after day, year after year, union laborers in Indiana go to work and get the job done. On time, on budget, and with fewer lost time accidents than any other trade. Why is that? It starts with the training these professionals receive through the Indiana Laborers Training Trust Fund. Since 1968, we've been responsible for a hands-on skill training program that has enrolled more than 25,000 laborers. Take the finest instructors and staff in the industry. Leading edge training facilities in a safe environment conducive to learning and combined with the eager and qualified laborers to produce the safest, most productive and reliable workforce in the industry. The proud men and women of Indiana's Laborers International Union. team of sports medicine experts at orthopedic specialists of Northwest Indiana is committed to getting athletes back in the game with a focus on not only helping patients recover from injuries, but helping improve athletic performance to prevent injuries. Orthopedic specialists provides the most advanced, comprehensive care to their patients. To learn more about all orthopedic specialists can do to help rehab and prevent athletic injuries, visit them on the web at OSNI.org or call them at 219-923-3300. Orthopedic specialists of Northwest Indiana, providing world-class care to Northwest Indiana for over 20 years. been said that one man's junk is another man's treasure but at total disposal your junk is our junk think of total disposal as that key player that has several options commercial residential or hand off your junk at our blaine street partners transfer station total disposal is more than a service provider we are an innovator for a sustainable tomorrow well beyond the curb for a complete list of services go to totaldisposal.com honesty and dependability that's the total disposal promise Welcome back as Laborers Local 41 presents RSN game day coverage of the Highland Holiday Hoops Fest right here <laughs> on the Region Sports Network. Mike Brenner here along with Jay Simmons. And Jay, we had a really compelling first game. This one's starting to pull away from Highland a little bit. If you are Whiting, what are you taking positive out of this first half? Uh, they, they've done some great things with ball movement around the outside. They got to continue to do that, and just I think they got to be a little bit more effective in setting the screen so they can open up some of those three pointers that they've been able to hit. They've been, but they have been doing that very well so far in the first half. They just got to take more of them. It seems like Whiting just has a lot of turnovers, unforced errors, traveling, um, you know, carrying the ball, the things that are unforced. That is that are they're not allowing uh, they're not allowing themselves to get off their shots. You know they're and then you know of course they being the smaller team they've got to do you've got to do a, twice as good of a job mm -hmm. boxing out and Highlands getting a lot of offensive rebounds and easy putbacks. You know it's sort of like a Morton in the first game Hanover Central playing a zone same thing Whiting playing a zone. 
giving up the easy rebounds on the defensive end for both of those teams, Hanover and Whiting. Well, two things that stand out to me. Luke Zorich having himself a really nice game, 10 points already, three triples in that second quarter to help uh, keep it, you know, respectable to a, to an extent. Uh, so he's got uh, that nine points in the second quarter alone, but two of six from the free throw line. They went to the line a couple of times. Two of six from the line, though, for yeah. Whiting. That'd be another four points that they could attack onto their score had they knocked those down. Yeah, you definitely got to take advantage of when you get the chance at the charity stripe. And, you know, especially Whiting being a big underdog in this game, you've got to be able to connect on those points. You know, Whiting coming into today's game uh, offensively only averaging 34 points a game, giving up 64. And I think a lot of that has to do with the size factor and their lack of rebounding. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, but on the other side, and so for Highland, or for Whiting, you had three guys score that first half. Meanwhile, for Highland, you see you've got eight different scores for Highland right now. So they're really uh, getting a lot of guys in and passing the ball around and getting a lot of ball movement. And a lot of guys are taking advantage of their opportunities. Uh, nobody has less than two points that has scored in the, in, in the game. It's either threes or six or eight. Well, there you go. Man. You're doing, <laughs> working some math here, huh? <laughs> even though it's even though it's winter break, yeah, I am I am thinking about uh, the math part. So Braden Jones with three, Walter Glover Jr. with eight, and it's because he's getting second chance opportunities. Yes, underneath. He's, he's he's crashing the boards hard for sure. Uh, Zeka Zika is got three, Tannis with three, Maldonado with three, Johnson with eight, Sands with six, and then Almaniri with six as well. He's also doing really well on that down at that uh, that block position for yes, he is. for for Highland. And uh, probably Nick Johnson would have more points if he didn't pick up two early fouls. He's got eight in the first quarter and then nothing in the second. That's because he picked up those two quick fouls in the first quarter. Correct. All right, we're going to step aside for just a moment. This is the Highland Holiday Hoops Fest brought to you by Laborers Local 41 right here on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Blythe's Athletics in Valparaiso, whose team has been serving your team since 1959, is a leader in athletic apparel and equipment sales. Whether it's off the rack or customized to your specifications, Blythe's has the products and staff to serve you best. Trophies, embroidering, screen printing, athletic shoes, anything you're looking for, you'll find at Blythe's. Visit them today at teamblythes.com, where the athlete shops. Did you know? They decorate over 210,000 cakes a year. Did you know? Their butcher will cut your meat your way. Did you know? They have trained floral designers in store. Did you know? They will make your wedding cake. Did you know? They have a variety of deli bakeable entrees. Did you know? Their online app has coupons and so much more. Who does that? Strack and Van Till. Now you know. From schools to stadiums, hospitals and bridges. Everywhere you look, Union Carpenters are building Indiana. With jobs and skilled trades in high demand, there's never been a better time to start building your future. As an apprentice, you'll earn a debt-free college degree, earn while you learn, and receive great benefits like health care and retirement. So what are you waiting for? Visit Carpenters.com to learn more. Visit Carpenters.com and start building your future today. Java Wave at your local Family Express is the perfect way to get your day started or keep you moving at any time. With 12 freshly ground bean-to-cup flavors to choose from, Java Wave at Family Express has just what you're looking for, whether it's hot or iced coffee. To see all of the delicious flavor options and to find a Family Express near you, log on to FamilyExpress.com slash Java Wave. Indiana laborers are the best trained, safest, and most productive workforce around. Day after day, year after year, union laborers in Indiana go to work and get the job done. On time, on budget, and with fewer lost time accidents than any other trade. Why is that? It starts with the training these professionals receive through the Indiana Laborers Training Trust Fund. Since 1968, we've been responsible for a hands-on skill training program that has enrolled more than 25,000 laborers. Take the finest instructors and staff in the industry. Leading edge training facilities in a safe environment conducive to learning and combined with the eager and qualified laborers to produce the safest, most productive, and reliable workforce in the industry. The proud men and women of Indiana's Laborers International Union.
Welcome back to game day here on the Region Sports Network, brought to you by Laborers Local 41. To find out how you can have a career as a union laborer, check out laborers41.com. All right, halftime here, almost over at Highland High School between the Trojans and the Oilers of Whiting. So we have one more half to play between these two schools. Jay will join us in just a moment. Yeah, to step aside. He's getting ready to check on his flights. He's going to be traveling here the next couple of days. So Highland in the Northwest Crossroads Conference has not played a conference game just yet. They have their first conference matchup against Lowell on January 8th. So that's certainly something that they're getting ready to be prepped for. Four-time sectional champions are the Trojans. The Whiting, they're also four-time sectional champions. They lost their... Uh, I'm sorry, they are tied for last in the conference play with Wheeler and Griffith. 0-3 in conference play so far for Whiting. Looking to get off the schneid. Trying to get a win here this week during this Highland Holiday Hoops Fest. They're going to do it here. they got a long way to go. 40-13 to your score as we start the second half. Highland starts with the basketball. Try to feed it underneath. That's Tannis. Glover with it now. And the winner of this one will face Morton a little bit later on tonight. The feed to Glover, a little too strong off the window. And a foul underneath. We'll see who gets the foul. A lot of bodies in a lot of different positions here. And it's going to be against Highland. So that might, based on the reaction, that might be against Nick Johnson for the foul. It is. So that's his third. Ouch. As we start this second half here, first team foul for Highland. And it's against Nick Johnson. Definitely not the guy... You want uh, going down to foul trouble here, trying to get through this traffic. It was Harbin, and he gets called for the walk. Yeah, another turnover by the Whiting offense. Also, I was given a call while you were uh, stepped aside. Uh, apparently, we're switching roles. You're doing play-by-play -play the fourth right. quarter. I'm doing the, the analysis work. Oh, boy, work it's going to be a long fourth quarter then <laughs> for the listeners. Steele has that one poked out of his hands. He goes for the jump shot. He's able to get his own shot back here. Still no scoring here in this second half, but we've only gone one minute into the quarter. Johnson. Nice. A couple turnovers early, or early here and another one. Now have a traveling call against Johnson. So, yes, another turnover. If you're keeping track of the turnovers, your pencil's busy. Yes, it is. That's why I don't do that because <laughs> I don't have enough ink in my pen for that. Yeah, I don't use, I don't use, we don't use pencils. We use, we use pens. We're confident in our right. Yes, we are. Huffman gives inside. Huffman for that jump shot, no good. Trying to clean it up was Gendrus. Took a hard foul. That to be interesting to see who the call is on. Yeah, we got 14. That's Eric Tannis. As uh, first team second. 32. Nick Johnson was in the neighborhood. Trying to inbound here. It's going to nobody, though. Glover comes up with it. Glover going all the way to the window. And a foul. Let's see if the bucket counts. Yeah, they're going to call basket good. Basket is good. So it is for a three-point play. So Glover picking up his 10th points of the game. We'll go for a three-point opportunity here. Toth picks up his second foul, by the way. The team's first here in the half. And he is able to knock that one down. So yeah, Nothing but the bottom of the net. Nothing but the bottom. Trying to get through that defense there. Harbin. Highland playing a little zone here and uh, working on some things in the second half. Harbin pulls up for three, is able to connect. Oh, I'm sorry, they do rule it a two, excuse me. Hopefully you didn't put it in pen down there as I a three. It, I wrote it as a two. There you go. Rico corrected me before I could uh, scribble it down. Right, that's the uh, second time he's been helping you out throughout the <laughs> couple games. What was the first time? I don't know. Something. <laughs> one, one, one help per game. There we go. That was like a pinball down there trying to get into that basket. It does not. And we'll have a foul call here against Whiting. Falls on Gendrus, his second. Team's second of the half. Both teams with two. 
Trying to steal that one, but yeah, he did step out of bounds. So it's going to stay here with Highland. Harbin tried. Yep, good hustle and, right there. And they didn't blow the whistle, uh, the whistle initially, and I was thinking maybe they might get away with it, but nope. The baseline official did call it. The inbound is to steal. Gives to Glover. Too strong off the window. Coming down in transition. Here's Toth. Giving into the corner. Zorich for three. Just off the mark a little bit, but Harbin comes down with the rebound, now giving it to Huffman. Going to set something up again. This time a three-point basket in the corner, no good. That was from Toth. Seems to be a popular area for the Whiting Oilers to shoot some threes. Last two shots came from there. Tannis. Matched up against Harbin, 14 versus 14 there. Jones for three off the mark. Trying to clean it up is Johnson. He can't get that one to go a little too strong. Whiting come down with it now. Yeah, Whiting got out of their zone defense and playing man-to-man -man on that last uh, possession against Highland. Toth. Looks like Highland playing a little 1-3-1 defense. Now the skip pass over to Huffman, trying to feed into the middle, has it stolen away. Steele comes down with it. Here comes Jones now. Jones takes travel. the little Euro step, but they call it as the travel. Say, so well, one too many. A couple check-ins here for Highland. Eisen and and Amiri comes in as well. And then Torres for Whiting. 4.20 left to go in this third quarter. Don't forget we'll name the IKRCC play of the game as this one is blocked by Highland. IKRCC, the Indiana Kentucky Ohio Regional Council of Carpenters. And now another foul against Whiting here. That's going to be on number 15, Jedediah Huffman. His first, team's third. We also have the Region Sports Network Blue Collar Player of the Game, brought to you by the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Early thoughts on your award winners? Don't reveal them yet, but just early I'm thoughts. Just, I'm working on it right now. All right. He's crunching numbers. Steals short on that jumper. Try to keep it in bounds and saved as Zorch comes up with it now. Under four minutes to play here in this third quarter. And the team not, not victorious as Toth is able to push that one around. Here's a three-point shot put up. Rattles around, doesn't go. Rebound comes down to Harbin. Tries to put it back up, and the ball is free. Here comes Steele with it. Gives to Glover. Glover with a nice little easy oh, layup nice off the take. fingers. Again, the team not victorious will take on Hanover at around 5.30 this evening. Winner gets Morton around 7.30 as Steele tries to save that one on the steal. He does. Steel in transition. He gets the roll off the window. That little, little Euro step, left hand move to the back bucket. And that is Steele's first bucket of the game, if you can believe it. Shot put up from Huffman from the left side here. I know we're dealing with some technical difficulties. Glover to the window, tries to lay it home, gets fouled. Well, as we, now we bring you the action back here. Glover does get the bucket to fall through. And he will go to the line and shoot one on the foul attempt. Foul is on 15. That is Huffman, his second. And the team's fourth. Unlike live action, camera going out on us for a hot second. It's the weather. We're blaming it on the weather. Yes, it is. It's getting a little snowy out there. Your favorite. Don't use that word. Your favorite word. <sighs> I don't allow that in my classroom, you know that? <laughs> not a word I allow. You're going to have to move somewhere a little bit further south. You're not kidding. Glover connects on the three-point play. 16 points for Glover <laughs> in this one. Yeah, Rico said he moved to Cedar Lake. Yeah, that's right. pretty far south. I'm actually not too far. Donaldson going to Sotelo. Donaldson at the free throw line gives up. Sotelo for a long-range shot. 
We'll call it a pass. Uh, a little baby hook shot put up by Torres. No good. And we'll have a jump ball called. I believe that's going to go by way of Highland, so they'll have to inbound underneath the basket. 2.16 to go in the third quarter. Ten points scored for Highland here in this second half. Yeah, nice job by Highland doing a, you know, coming out and working on some things in the second half here with the big lead, to, you know, working on that 1-3-1 one, one zone. Didn't need to work on some man ball movement here. They're seeming a little stagnant right now. Shot put up for a three-point play, but Eisen not able to connect. Donaldson in transition. Oh, and they waved the basket off. The bucket's not going to count. The foul will be on Eisen. His first. Yeah. I believe we're going to have a running clock now with over 35 points. So the clock will continue to run with 90 seconds to go. Rico wants to stop the clock, but it's a running clock at this point now. Well, it'll help Whiting uh, get a little bit more rest for the, the first game of the night's action. Yeah, they're going to play back-to-back -back games here. If this lead continues, as stranger things have happened in a ball game, Jay. I'm sure they have. 63 seconds to go now as the clock continues to run, down to one minute. Trying to pass inside, trying to give that one up. Ison now in the corner for a three-point shot that rattles right around the rim. Maldonado. I don't think he called that one. No, he didn't. <laughs> are you gonna count? Are you gonna count that then? Are we allowed? Yes, to? you're gonna have to count it. Should I put that in my book? Put a little asterisk next to it. We'll have a delay a game as we do yeah. have an injury here to Ison who has to come off the floor. Looks like he uh, when he went up. Uh, Twisted his ankle a little bit, came down on somebody else's foot. But a quick check in now. It's Onahan checks in for Highland. Donaldson, 22 seconds, pulls up for three. He connects. Yes. First three point basket for. Whiting that is in from Zorich in this game, who has not factored into the scoring yet in this second half. Shot put up. That's by, let's see, that was by Sands, who gets that two-point basket. And we do have a traveling call as the quarter comes to an end. So Highland up 55-18. At the end of three, we will have a fourth quarter and a running clock the rest of the way. You're watching Game Day on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. Blythe's Athletics in Valparaiso, whose team has been serving your team since 1959, is a leader in athletic apparel and equipment sales. Whether it's off the rack or customized to your specifications, Blythe's has the products and staff to serve you best. Trophies, embroidering, screen printing, athletic shoes, anything you're looking for, you'll find at Blythe's. Visit them today at teamblythe's.com, where the athlete shops. Java Wave at your local Family Express is the perfect way to get your day started or keep you moving at any time. With 12 freshly ground bean to cup flavors to choose from, Java Wave at Family Express has just what you're looking for, whether it's hot or iced coffee. To see all of the delicious flavor options and to find a Family Express near you, log on to FamilyExpress.com slash Java. Welcome back to Game Day here on the Region Sports Network, brought to you by Labor's Local 41. Start of the fourth quarter here between Whiting and Highland. Trying to drive inside, and we'll have a foul as Huffman was trying to drive inside the lane. Foul against Highland here. This will be the team's fourth team foul. And I saw... Because there's free throws being shot, Rico. Not during free throws on fouls. So the foul was on number 12, which is... is like a, uh, Zeka Zika, excuse me. Was first one good? I was writing down in my book. Yes, yes. it was good. Then we'll count that. Yeah. 
And knocks them both down. Jedediah Huffman knocking those down. Whiting was two of six from the line in the first half. Now two for two here in the second yeah, half. Definitely so. need to work on that in, during the game or in, the, in practice. I mean, if you're definitely a smaller team, you definitely got to take advantage of those chances at the charity stripe. Zeka gives up to Sands. Sands looking for an open man. Drive inside the lane there. A three-point shot put um, up, and we will have a foul on the push call. from Tucker on Zeka Zika. So he'll go to the line. Let's see what the other number was on the floor for Highland. That's 21. Jordan Tillman for Highland. So the foul is on Tucker for Whiting. Their fifth foul. Zeka Zika short. On the first attempt, make sure you stay with us after the game. We'll end the IKORCC play of the game. Brought by the Indiana Kentucky High Regional Council of Carpenters. We've got the Region Sports Network Blue Collar Player of the Game. Yeah, and then, our our uh, Blue Collar Player of the Game for the first game was Ladalian Barnes with 19 points in the win by Morton. We had him as our blue collar? I'm sorry, uh, the superhero of the game, my fault. Yes. Okay, and the blue collar player was Josh Austin with 13 points from Hanover. That sounds more accurate. There we go. And then our alley oop for play of the game, right? Yep, and our alley oop <laughs> play of the game by Chase Kasman. Uh, Two handed flush on the fast break. That wasn't break. really an alley oop. No, just... it was a fast break. He. <laughs> Somebody called it. Uh, I wonder who that guy was. Staying with his shot and putting it back home for Highland, Zika Zika. Yeah, we won't mention the uh, play-by-play guy's name in this broadcast. Yeah, Michael Prater. <laughs> Trying to drive inside the lane, and again, Huffman gets fouled on his way up. He'll have two shots, and now the clock will stop again with 6.22. Because when the free throws are going to be shot, they have to stop the clock. We're teaching Rico new things here today. Yes, we are. I love it. Mr. Know-it-all. <laughs> that one rattles home yeah, for... Yeah, nice, nice shooter's huh? touch. Hits the front of the rim and rolls around and goes in. Nice shooter's touch. For Huffman. Second attempt up. And good. So he's 4-4 four four from the line here in this quarter. And he's carrying the team. Six points in the game for Huffman. Maldonado lost that on his way up. It comes down to Sands. And now they get it out to Tillman here, which uh, I mean, that uh, Whiting can, you know, hang, you know, not hang their heads about. They already have scored more points in this game than they did the previous time, these two there teams. There we go. Were. Nice ball movement right there by Highland. Looks like they set a nice play right there. Double screen, wide open jumper. Toth for three. He connects. Now, I was looking down at my book. Who scored the last point for Highland? Did you, do you remember? Uh, 33. 33. That is Sands. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. This is why I bring you along. Maldonado with a trick play. Yeah. Rico Maldonado. Look at that little reversal. Yeah, how about it? That might be our IQRCC play of the game. Yeah, well, Toth. Write for another that three. Down. Write that down. Five, 12 in the fourth. Are you going to remember what that's for? So, no, <laughs> but I have to. <laughs> I'll try. That one's off the hands uh, of Highland. That was. I'll write it down. Uh, I K O R C C play of the game. <laughs> I'm writing it down right now. Uh, you know, this is like only the second time you and I have worked together, but it's been fun. We yes. had two different sports. Yeah, we did uh, a football game together this fall, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. We had the, what, Hobart and Culver Academy game? Yes, we did. Yeah, I did, I did several Hobart games this year. I remember that. Yes, yeah, uh, Nathan sends out the emails to everybody, and everybody gets to see who's covering what games. Yeah, it's fun. It's a big group email. We do that all season long. Football, basketball, baseball as well. 
Get that little bit of soccer coverage. Wrestling coverage as well. Donaldson tries to put that one up. No good. Clock continues to run here with just over four minutes to play. And we ventured out this past fall. We had a little soccer coverage on the region sports All network right. as well. I, I know nothing of soccer, so I will not be doing a color analysis of that. <laughs> we might have to just throw you in there one day, just get you to learn. Start watching. World Cup coming up not too far from now. I, I can't take all the excitement. It's so high scoring. The sarcasm just not radiating from you at all. <laughs> Strong take right there by 30 from Highland. That was on a hand. He's not on the, my roster. I got him here. This is yeah. why he went down on the double check. There you go. Got some JV kids coming in to get in some playing time because of COVID issues for either team. That's a turnover here for Whiting. Well, when, they, when Highland first came out after the, uh, the first game ended, there was only seven guys. I'm like, oh, boy, they just got ravaged by COVID. And they were just uh, coming out and just walking through some stuff, doing some jump shots. And all of a sudden, five more guys walked out. I was like, okay, all's right in the world. Going all the way to the window, Zeka Zika. I kind of hope he gets to be one of our award winners, just so you have to say the name. <laughs> I'll say number 12 from Highland. Davenport gives up. It's Torres who puts up the three-point shot. No good. 2.40 left to play. Going all the way down. Tillman off the window. Nice take right there with some pressure right on him. So Tillman gets in the scoring decision here with 2.30 left to go in this one. How many guys, uh, how many guys have scored for Highland? 11. All right, that's... I had to take my shoes off for that one. <laughs> I will well, put them I back on. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to knock anyone out here in press row. That's uh, so. That's everybody that Highland brought out to the game, huh? Uh, pretty much. Yeah. There's uh, only one guy who hasn't scored yet. All right, they got to get him the ball in the next two minutes. Uh, I don't know if we will see Ison back on the floor. He was dealing with that ankle issue. Oh yeah, he's he's not coming back out. Fifty called for the foul. That's on Amiri. His first and the team's sixth. So next one of his automatic one and one situations here as Donaldson goes to the line. And that one hit every inch of the rim, but it does go down. <laughs> yes, it did. Spun all the way around. Hey, who cares how it, you know. Who, hey, it counts as one point in the book, right? No, nothing has to be pretty just to get it down. Yeah, that one rattles home. We'll name the. Crowd Company's Letterman Superhero of the game as well right after this game ends. Actually, you know what, Jay? Let's go ahead and we can, we can start doing some of those award winners if you'd like. Rico, All you right. okay with that? Yeah, Rico's okay with that. Want, uh, I'll let you think about it for a second. Okay, let me, th let me think. Okay. Hold on, you hear, the, you hear the wheels spinning. The wheels are definitely spinning. <laughs> I'll let you look at my cheat sheet. I have to take my glasses off. Whining gets a nice bucket here from Tucker, a three-point basket. Maldonado going all the way to the window. A little too strong on the push-up, though. Gets his own rebound with a buck 20 to go. I'll let you write things down, and then we'll uh, start looking at those things. Don't forget, later this evening, we've got two more games for you. Pending the score holds for the next uh, 66 seconds as this one goes to the window, and this one will go out of bounds now. Clock will continue to go with one minute left to go exactly. Uh... Morton will play Highland, just a good, fun rivalry matchup. Yeah. So Morton and Highland a little bit later on tonight. That's at 7.30. Winner gets to move on to the semifinal round for the championship. And then uh, we got Hanover and Whiting coming up a little bit later on. That's at 5.30. That'll be our first game tonight. Yeah, when, uh, <laughs> when I played 40 years ago at Highland. How many years ago? 40. Ooh, man. I, or I'm sorry, 39. 39. 39. That's still more years than I've been alive. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to throw it in. So Thanks. I don't know I don't know if I mentioned this. Yeah, we, we, you, we were, you're getting even. You're got, when, when, you've when gotten we were, even. When we were doing the football game, I don't know if I threw it out there. You know, you were you were my elementary school gym teacher. That's right. Back in the day. Prattsman <laughs> Elementary School. You just, couldn't, you just couldn't get out of I just can't get away from you. No, you can't. You can run, but you can't hide. <laughs> <laughs> nice shot put up by Patterson, really fighting hard on the glass to get that shot to go. And the final score... Highland wins it 67-35.
They will advance to play Morton at 7.30 tonight. That's the second game of another doubleheader we'll have here on the Region Sports Network. Whiting will take on Hanover at 5.30. Uh, last I checked, Mike Zajac and Greg Braggs will have the call for that one a little bit later on this evening. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Go ahead and take a look at our award winners. You ready for those, sir? I have got two out of the three. Okay. Well, you can think as uh, as you're talking about the next couple. I will slowly. There you go. Slowly turn the pages. Yes. All right. So it is time to name the Crow Companies Lantern Man Superhero of the game. The Crow Companies have offices open 9 to 7, Monday through Friday, and Saturdays till 2 in Highland, Maryville, and Michigan City. All right, Jay, who do you have as our crowd uh, I've got Walter Glover, a okay. freshman. Yeah. Forward. Let's see. Walter Glover at six foot. Came up with 18 points in the ball game. Uh, is that uh, doing the correct math? Are those made free throws that are there? Yes, yeah, 16 uh, points. Oh, so 16. Okay. 16. There we go. 16 points. And uh, so we go ahead and finish that read up. All right, so that was our Crow Company's Landerman superhero of the game. Walter Glover Jr. finishes with 18 points. Really was dominant on the boards, uh, really fighting underneath and getting those layups that were so crucial for Highland in this one. All right, let's go ahead and look at our IKORCC play of the game brought to you by IKORCC. Learn more at IKORCC.com. And that was Rico Maldonado. I thought... I thought I was going to say Castillo, but we're going to go with Rico Malnado. He was on the court tonight, and that came with 5-12 left in the fourth quarter with a spinning move and a little reversal layup, sweet off the glass, and in for two. Nice take there, See, you Rico. Can, you can do you can do play-by-play. Play. What are you talking about? That was a beautiful <laughs> description. I mean, you had a lot of time to process it. Yes, I did. Words, but, yeah, that was nice. Thank you. All right. Only let's after uh, 18 years of being here, I can finally move <laughs> up from color analysis to play-by-play. Play. It only took 18 years. Sure. Yeah, you can take. You can switch roles. I told you we were supposed to switch roles in the fourth oh. quarter, but I didn't. Uh, figured you didn't want to. All right, it's time to name our Region Sports Network Blue Collar Player of the Game, brought to you by the Region Sports Network, the only game in town. And uh, you're probably going to hear some noises in Jay's head because the wheels are turning right now. And we're going to go with Luke Zorich with 10 points in the first half to carry the Whiting Oilers in this game. So Luke Zorich. Yeah, they they scored 12 points in that second quarter, and then he had... Nine of them. So he had certainly... And, and, and definitely when the game was still with the, the A players out there, Luke Zorch really carried the team with banging home three threes pretty much almost in a row there. He was he was red hot for a while, and then all of a sudden just sort of disappeared off the off the face of the earth there. Yeah, getting some other guys, uh, some opportunities yes. for the Whiting Oilers. All right, our executive producer, Chris Ramirez, coordinating producer, Nathan Laird, your broadcast crew today, myself, Michael Branner, and the one and only Jay Simmons. Great to see you, partner. I'll yep. see you uh, next week. Our game producer, Rich Castillo, and on video we had Andrew Johnson and C.J. Bynum doing a great job tonight, or today, I should say. Uh, big thanks to Ryan Harrington, the AD here at Highland, always taking care of us. Appreciate that. And then, of course, to A.J. Toth and J.D. Fabian, uh, the head coaches for Whiting and Highland, respectively. And then, of course, the viewers on Facebook.com slash Region Sports and RegionSports.com. Without you guys, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. So thank you very much. Stay tuned tonight. A couple more basketball games. These same four teams will be in action on the floor here at Highland, but make sure you stay tuned a little bit later on this evening. You've been watching to Game Day here on the Region Sports Network, the only game in town.